Hello there and welcome back to another one of my thrilling videos. It's great to be back. So today, as you probably already figured out, I'm going to be looking at the Ilford Sporty. And it's quite pleasing actually to be back doing a camera review because I haven't done one in quite some time. So brilliant to be back. So yeah, um, I picked up uh, the Ilford Sporty uh, in a local charity shop, as I always do, uh, back in kind of like late spring, summer of 2023, uh, camera, Got a nice carry case, the actually original one. Uh, it says on the front, Ilford made in West Germany. Uh, sorry, Western Germany. It looks like a little bit of like a Bakelite finish on the front, kind of rest of the case is leather. It's a nice combination, isn't it? Bakelite and leather, mm, 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 tasty. <laughs> um, and what was really pleasing uh, is it was a 120 film camera, um, an Ilford 120 film camera, because it's, you know, you always find 35 millimeter cameras in charity shops, but a 120 is quite, it's quite, it's quite rare. So really pleased, five pound, brilliant stuff. But like I said, it was kind of late spring, early summer of 2023. Um, I had uh, an expired roll of um, Ilford um, HP5 plus 400. So it was only expired by about six months. So I popped that in the camera, took a photograph of my father um, in the back garden. It was a nice sunny day. Uh, so I went out and done that. And then I totally forgot um, about the camera. I put it in my cupboard, um, found it again uh, in January. And I thought, I need to finish the film. So I went out, took the rest of the film, you know, shot the rest of the film, sent it off for developing and processing. But unfortunately, when it came back, and they did tell me this uh, when they, they was doing the development process for me, that there was some kind of issue with the film, maybe a bit of moisture had got into the camera. To me, it looked like mold. So it's possible that the, uh, the conditions, you know, from kind of like summer into autumn into winter, maybe there was a little bit of moisture, maybe a bit of mold. But anyway, I felt it's not really fair to review this camera um, when, you know, it's effectively, I've made a mistake, I've left it far too long, maybe in the wrong conditions. So I bought another roll of Ilford film, went out and shot in, la uh, in late March of 2024 this year, shot the whole reel in a day, sent it off, developed and processed. And that is where you find us today. Uh, I got the second lot of pictures back uh, today and uh, really, really pleased with them. Um, and you can tell it was nothing to do, the, the error on the first reel, was um, obviously down to moisture, mold, something like that. You'll see those photos um, in the, uh, at the end of the video and I'll label them up so you can see them. Um, so what should we talk about? So the Ilford Sporty um, was produced around 1959. Can you believe that? That is 65 years old. Uh, and also went by the name, I believe, of the Decora Digna in Germany. So um, it had a very nice humble name. Give me my Decora, please. <laughs> Now, um, you're very limited with regard to the overall functionality of the camera, but for me, that's also part of its charm. It's so simple. And if you were somebody starting out, you know, and wanted to shoot 120 film, this could be the perfect camera for you. Um, the only aperture control um, can be found on top of the lens casing, and we will have a look at that in a moment. There's a simple little lever or a switch, if you will, which allows you to go between sunny or cloudy flash mode. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it's being set to, the aperture that is, um, but my guess is possibly sunny might be f11, um, f16, something like that. If we think about you know the, the sunny uh, 16 exposure, probably something like that. Um, and then cloudy flash mode might be something like f8, f9. I don't know for certain, so uh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, and then you have um, your measure of distance, which is a little dial on front of the camera which I assume just helps to ensure that the image is in focus. And we'll, we'll have a little look at that uh, shortly. Um, um, other than these two prominent features on the camera, there really isn't else that matters other than the fact that, you know, that the, the shutter is firing. It is that simple. It is that simple. <laughs> so what are my takeaways from using the camera? Well, it's sturdy and seemingly very reliable, you know, and just because, you know, it's 65 years old, um, an old age pensioner of the camera world, if you will, you know, other than a, slight issue, slight tightness in the film loading bay, um, it still functions perfectly well. So, you know, never be scared of picking up older cameras in charity shops because some of these ones are just workhorses. They just keep going and going and going. Um, and what I would recommend is that if you are shooting with a camera like this and you are using a, a film of a 400 ISO, um, that you kind of take a tripod because obviously using a, a slightly um, slower uh, speed film as such as a 400 ISO um, you're always going to find that if there's any kind of movement 
um, in the camera, you are going to get jutteriness or blurriness. So um, not really a fault of the camera, but if you are shooting with these types of cameras, I'd recommend maybe taking a tripod with you just to ensure that you don't get kind of any jutter. I think the last thing I just want to say is kind of, um, you know, how it seems to me that kind of, you know, my choice to kind of shoot on film is becoming more and more expensive as time is going on. And, you know, if you're fortunate enough to be able to develop and process your own film um, and scan them, then, um, you know, that's fantastic. And I, I wish that that is something that I could do. And I think that that is something that I might look into doing soon because it's getting quite expensive. If I just um, take you through this very briefly, uh, when I first um, run a real film through this, I actually had that film, so I didn't have to buy that. But I had to send it away for developing and processing, and there's also postage incorporated in that. So the first reel of film that I had to send away to be processed uh, cost me um, just over 16 uh, UK pounds. And then obviously because I had the problem, um, I had to buy another film, that cost me nine UK pounds. I had to pay for the postage, which was uh, £3.50. Uh, and then I had to pay for the development and process, and that was £14.45. So that cost me £27. So all in all, I've spent about 43 UK pounds um, just to shoot with this camera. So, you know, you can see now, you know, if you, you can cut out that development and that processing, it can save you a lot of money. But um, it's a real shame, you know, it'd be, it'd be so lovely to kind of get in-house development back, you know, take your film down there, uh, cut out the postage, but, you know, whether or not it's going to happen or not, I don't know. You know, it makes me sad, really. But the fact that we're still, we're still able to shoot film in 2024 um, is mind-blowing. I, I would have thought that it would just be completely defunct. So come on, pick those cameras up, people. Go out to your local charity shops, find those film cameras and start shooting. And let's together, you know, try and bring the cost of uh, shooting film down. But anyway, let's have a quick look at the camera, a little close-up, and then I will share my results with you. So please let me know uh, what you think. I will see you all later. So as promised, here is the Ilford Sporty. I'm not gonna try and rush through this too quickly, but there really isn't that much to see. So when we start on the front of the camera here, you can see the viewfinder window here. We have our shutter release button there, which is working absolutely fine. And then we have the most two important things on the front of the camera. If we just have a look, I'll just bring it slightly closer to the camera. We have our dial there, can't go any further to the left. And it says here, close-ups on the left, in the middle, groups, and on here, views. And effectively, you would just turn this to whatever one you want. So if you want to take the group photo, which is between 10 to 25 feet, we would set it there. And if we want to go for uh, views, anywhere between 25 feet and infinity, you'd go there. Now, I don't really know if you can set it in the middle there, because I suppose if that's 10 to 25, I'm assuming that this starts at 10 and it goes all the way round to 25. If anyone knows please let me know but that really is just to help you with the focal distance so that it's not I guess out of focus and then on the top here we have the little lever or the switch for sunny or cloudy flash and if I just position it just in the right light you should be able to just see the little mechanism move backwards and forwards as I say I, I think for sunny it's probably like f11 f16 and for cloudy flash it's probably F8, F9. So looking at the back of the camera, the only thing we have is the film window, which will allow you to see the backed paper of the 120 film, because um, that's important, different to 35 millimeter film, of course. So as you wind on the film, you'll see slowly but surely the numbers come through each time. It's really cool 120 film. Um, on the top of the camera, we have the wind on mechanism film wind on mechanism and then we have cold shoe we have the tripod mount on the bottom of the camera and then we have the lever that we press up to get in to load the film excuse me and as you can see here it's quite clean to be honest um, let's just fire that shutter for you just to show you it's operational there you have it on the left here is where you load the film and this was the only area that I had this, a problem with on my second time shooting. Uh, once I'd loaded the film in and shut it up, it's just a bit stiff there. Um, I think the paper, the backed paper was getting snagged. And as I was trying to wind that film on, it was just getting stuck. Um, and it looks like really cool here. It says, always use 
Ilford 120 films, and I was. So that's really nice to actually have that sticker still in there. Wonderful. Um, and that's it, really. You know, uh, once you've loaded your film, you shut the camera and go out shooting. Um, and, that, and that really is it. So um, I, hope you, I hope you enjoyed looking at the Ilford Sporty with me. And, um, yeah, I'm going to now share the results, and you can let me know what you think. I'll see you all later. Cheers.